Good afternoon, everybody. Let's get started with the class. So for announcements, uh, check the upcoming assignments. Those are all posted on Canvas. You have a, a pre-lab coming up, a quiz coming up, homework one coming up. So take a look at those. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, you can post technical questions to Slack and uh, stop by office hours if you want any, uh, if you want to discuss any of those problems or anything else. Um, if the invitation link for Slack is not working for you, I, I've had some reports of that, but I think those were only on mobile devices like your phone. That So give it a shot on a PC if you're having any troubles with that in, invitation link. Um, and let's see, lab teams. So we're just finalizing lab teams now, and we will have lab this Friday. If you're So we have several lab teams of two. And uh, that causes that can cause a problem because we run out of benches and lab kits. And so uh, don't be shocked if we're um, reorganizing lab teams and teams of three. So if you if you if you want to self-organize into teams of three, as we mentioned, uh, go ahead and do that. If not, don't be surprised if we have to uh, split and combine teams to form teams of three as the enrollment stabilizes in the class. So if you have any questions during class, be sure to shoot me a chat or unmute and shout out your question. Otherwise, please stay muted to keep the background noise low. And let's get started with the course material. All right. So last time we started talking about circuit analysis fundamentals. I think this is going to be a review for many of you, but I, I, I think I'm going to point out some tips that will help you get your analysis um, right for some of the more complex problems. So let's talk about Kirchhoff's laws, Kirchhoff's current law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, and also um, series and parallel circuit elements. So let's go through that today. All right, so Kirchhoff's current law. Here's a circuit with several circuit elements and connections. And we defined a node last time. So a node is the entire connection between circuit elements. So I have, I have two nodes circled here, node one in red, node two in green. And so when you're working KCL, Kirchhoff's current law problems, um, consider the node, that entire connection, not just the junction between two of the wires of that node. Let's concentrate on node two and write a KCL equation for node two. I'm going to define currents uh, for node two into and out of node two, like I did here on the screen. Um, so I1 through I4 are currents. I've picked the reference directions arbitrarily. Okay, so if reference directions are given to you, use those. If reference directions aren't given, you can choose your own and the math will just work itself out. Um, okay, so KCL, Kirchhoff's current law, can be expressed in three ways. Here are the three ways. The first is this. The sum of currents entering a node is zero. Okay, so we have two currents entering the node as defined here, I1 and I3. We have two currents leaving the node, I2 and I4, um, as defined by their reference directions. But what I can do is I can, I can flip the reference directions around as long as I write a negative sign in front of the current. So I can say I2 is leaving the node, but negative I2 is entering. Likewise, I4 is leaving the node, but negative I4 is entering. So now, now I can sum all the currents entering the node and set that sum equal to zero. So I1 plus negative I2 plus I3 plus negative I4, those are all of the currents entering that node, and that equals zero. The second way to express KCL is the sum of currents leaving a node is zero. So I have I2 and I4 as originally defined leaving the node, I can flip I1's reference direction around and write that current leaving as negative I1, right? Likewise, I can do that with I3. 
So now I can sum all of the currents leaving that node, negative I1 plus I2 plus negative I3 plus I4 equals zero. So you look at those two equations, they're the same equation. If I multiply the top equation, both sides, by negative one, I get the equation below that. Uh, the third way is the sum of third way to express KCL is the sum of currents entering a node equals the sum of currents leaving a node. Okay, so going back to the original reference directions, I1 and I3 are entering, I2 and I4 are leaving. So I1 plus I3 equals I2 plus I4. These are all the same basically equations, right? I'm just rearranging. Um, variables on either side of the equal sign or multiplying both sides by negative one. Okay, so that's KCL, that's Kirchhoff's current law. <clears throat> You'll have problems where you either have uh, all known currents, except you have one unknown current, and you can use KCL to find that unknown current, um, or you may have multiple unknown currents and multiple nodes and so you have to write a system of equations to solve for the unknown currents. We will get to that. OK, so that's Kirchhoff's current law. Kirchhoff's voltage law requires a definition of a loop. So here is a circuit. And I have four circuit elements. And I have two terminals here. So those circles or dots are, are terminals. That might be where you connect another circuit um, or another component, but we're just going to leave those terminals open right now. A loop is a closed path around a circuit. It doesn't have to be a closed circuit, as I'll show you. It's just a closed path, which means you take your, your finger, your pen, your mouse, you start at one point on a circuit, you trace around that circuit, and you wind up back at the same point. That's a closed path. So for example, Let's start at the lower left here and go around clockwise, around A, B, and C. And so this would be what I'm calling loop one. So uh, loop one goes across A, goes across B, goes across C, back to the starting point. That's a closed path. Let's draw loop two. Let me start someplace else and go the opposite direction. So starting here at the upper right, I go across D, I go across C, and I jump from one terminal to another. That's OK. It's, a it's, it's not a closed circuit, but that's a closed path, which is a loop. And I'll show you how to deal with that. We also don't need to have loops as the innermost loops, right? You can go around a whole circuit. You can take different paths. This shows starting up at the top node, top center node, going around across D, across the terminals, across A, across B, back to the starting point. So that's what I'm calling loop three. So you can start at any point. You can go either direction. You can take any path you want, as long as you wind up ending at the starting point. OK, so let's do an example of writing Kirchhoff's voltage law KVL equations. So here's that circuit. Let me define some voltages. So I have VA, VB, VC, VD, VX. I've arbitrarily chosen reference polarities. If you're given reference polarities, use them. If not, you can choose your own. And if I happen to choose the opposite reference polarity, let's say for VA, compared to what you chose, then my answer is going to be negative your answer. But but it doesn't matter. They both mean the same thing. They, they both give you the voltage just with opposite polarities, and one will be negative of the other. So KVL says this. When you write a KVL equation, you, you sum the voltages around a loop, and you set that sum equal to 0. So let's, for example, write the KVL equation for loop 1. So here's how I recommend handling the signs of the voltages that you put into your equation, your KVL equation. So I'm starting at the lower right. I'm going to go clockwise. The way I do this, and I recommend doing this to minimize mistakes, is if you hit a minus, you write a minus. If you hit a plus, you write a plus. Okay. 
So in other words, I start here at this lower left corner. I go up. I hit a minus. So I write a minus in my equation. And I write whatever the specified value of that voltage is. So in this case, I'd write minus VA. I go around this loop one. I hit a plus sign. I write plus VB. Okay. Continue along this loop. I hit a minus sign, minus VC. Back to the starting point. Don't forget to write equal zero. So here's that equation. So this is a KVL equation for loop one. Let's do loop two. So loop two, I started at the upper right. I went counterclockwise. So go across D, I write plus VD. I go down across C, I write minus VC. I jump from this bottom terminal to the top terminal where there is a voltage defined, and I write minus VX. Okay, so I get this equation, VD minus VC minus VX equals zero. Um, don't let it don't let it bother you that I jumped from one node to another across two terminals that aren't connected to anything. That's okay because I have a voltage defined. So so there are plenty of circuits that have terminals, and um, they're not connected to anything. And you have a voltage. Take a battery, right? If you have a battery sitting on your desk, um, th there's a voltage across that battery, even though there's nothing connected to that battery. So that's an example of having a voltage between or across two terminals uh, that aren't connected to anything. Okay, let's do loop three. So starting at the top center node here, going to the right, minus VD plus VX minus VA plus VB equals zero. Okay, so I get this equation. Okay, so that's how you write, that's how I write a KVL equation. Um, I, I recommend when you hit a plus, you write a plus. When you hit a minus, you write a minus. And then whatever is specified between those two polarities, you, you write that value. Um, some books say and some people teach, well, they don't like what I do, right? I think my way is minimizing mistakes. But they say, well, if VA is 6 volts and I go from the negative side of VA to the positive side of VA. I've gone up six volts in potential, so I should write plus six volts because I've gone up six volts. And, go, and so that's fair. I guess you, you could do that, but, but then you have to, then it can get cumbersome keeping track of signs. For example, if VA was negative six volts, okay, so then I'm going from uh, the negative to the positive, so I'm going up in potential, but the voltage is negative, so I'm going down in potential. So do I write negative to go down in potential and six or negative, negative six, or, you know, so whatever, you, you can get yourself thinking about that too much. Um, what I do is, is I just, when I, when I hit a minus, I write a minus. When I hit a plus, I, uh, I, I write a plus. If I were going up through A and VA was negative six, I would write minus negative six, and that would be the term in my equation. Okay, someone asks in the chat, does it matter if you have the current going the same direction for loops one and two through C? Let me be clear here, these loops, these arrows do not indicate current flow. You cannot tell, you cannot tell which direction current is flowing. From what I have drawn here, current might be going up through A, it might be going through down through A. You can't tell from the circuit which direction current is going. It's, it's, it's not possible to tell. If I fill this in with voltage sources and resistors you could figure out but but right now so so the direction i go around a loop has nothing to do with the current flow direction okay it's only you choose you choose what, what direction you want to go you know if you if you have a loop that has let's say you know a b and c here with these three voltages and one of those voltages is unknown and two are known you could write an equation around loop one start at any point along that loop and go either direction and you'll get a valid equation. Okay, so it doesn't matter which way positive charge flow is actually flowing. It, it um, You can start at any point and go either direction. Okay. Um, so just because I go down through C with loop one and I go up, uh, let's see, if I if I chose to go up through C with loop two, it, would, it wouldn't matter. In one equation, I would subtract 
VC and the other equation, I would add VC, so it doesn't matter. All right, any other questions on that concept, KVL? All right, so let's try a clicker problem. So you have um, this circuit and you have two known voltages with reference polarities given for those voltages and you have a, a variable and unknown voltage across circuit element C with reference polarity given. So what is VC? So you can start at any point along, well, there's only one loop, right? You can only make one loop here. You could start at any node. You can go either direction. When you hit a plus, write a plus. When you hit a minus, write a minus. When you get back to the same point, write equals zero. And this is where I recommend, because there's like a negative voltage and and polarities switch as you go around the loop. I always write an equation. I really, even though I think I can do this in my head, I write an equation because you wouldn't be surprised even after doing this for 25 or 30 years, how much you can make a mistake. So it's worth writing it down. All right, so let's take uh, about 10 more seconds on this and then I'll call time. Go ahead and answer, take a guess if you haven't answered yet so that we can get, give, you, give you your clicker credit for today. Okay, so let's start this. Start talking about this. So I can start at any node and go either direction. So if I start at the, at the bottom um, and I go, Around clockwise, I would say plus six minus negative two minus VC equals zero. If I start at the upper left and I go counterclockwise, plus negative two minus six plus VC equals zero. Right? Start here, go either direction. You get the same equation. Okay. And so I chose to looks like uh, start at the lower left the bottom node, plus six, minus negative two, minus VC equals zero. So you get eight volts, okay? So if after seeing this example, that makes sense, you think you could do this, um, great. If you want to talk about this or work any problems on the whiteboard, stop by office hours and I'll show you how to, how to work this. If you have any examples you wanna go over, uh, let me know, let's work them at office hours, okay? All right, so for, for those just joining the class uh, today, if you didn't see the intro or if you don't have your clickers ready, that's okay. You, you only have to answer during half of the clicker questions, the clicker sessions, I should say, and, um, and then you get full credit for a homework. So be sure just, you know, from now on, answer all the quick clicker sessions, or there's probably gonna be eight or nine of those and uh, you'll get full credit. So it doesn't matter if you miss a day. Okay. All right. So let's talk a little bit about, um, uh, oh, someone asked, where do we find office hours? So office hours uh, generally are gonna be right after class. So you just stay on the Zoom session. I'll keep the Zoom session up. We'll wait a few seconds for folks to drop off who don't want to attend. And so stop on by if you have any questions, if you just want to listen in, if you have anything to talk about, just stop on by and we'll we'll stay up on the Zoom session. So let's talk about network topology and the way circuit elements can be connected together because it will help you in a process called network reduction and also taking complicated circuits and making them simpler. So network reduction turns a complicated circuit into an equivalent simple circuit for several purposes, for, for the purpose of easier analysis, for the purpose of maybe 
dividing a resistor into two resistors so that you can you can handle higher power um uh, maybe to make a a, a, a circuit element, uh, like say a capacitor, out of two different capacitors, to to make a capacitance that doesn't actually correspond to a standard value. So lots of reasons to talk about network reduction and series and parallel combinations. But generically, let's say you have this complicated circuit. It's not that complicated, but here's what I'm calling a complicated circuit: some circuit elements and a couple terminals. And so it's possible in many circuits that I could reduce this complicated circuit into a circuit that is a lot simpler, maybe even a single element, okay? And these circuits would be equivalent between terminals A and B. So what's that mean to be equivalent? Between terminals A and B for the left or the right circuit, these circuits would behave the same way as seen from the outside. So if I put both of these circuits in a box on the left and on the right would be just X, you know, two separate boxes, I expose two wires, label them A and B for each box, and th they would be equivalent. What does that mean? I give you a voltmeter, an ammeter, other circuits, a power supply, whatever. You connect whatever you want to them. They would both behave the same way. As you increase voltage, current might increase the same way for both circuits. Okay, so um, one way to perform network reduction is using series and parallel combinations of components. And so let's talk about what it means for components to be in series or for components to be in parallel. And you may have an intuitive feeling for this. A lot of times you can look at two circuit elements and say, I don't have the exact definition, but those are in series. I don't have the exact definition, but those are in parallel. That works. That's great. But for some circuits, it's not so obvious if circuit elements are in series and parallel. So, so it's worth paying attention to these definitions because I bet you'll get to one of the homework problems and you'll get, you'll get stumped. You'll look at it and you go, Either it'll take you a long time to recognize series or parallel or neither. Or once you go to these definitions, you'll say, ah, I, I, I know that two of these elements are in series or parallel. So let's define series. Circuit elements are in series when the same current flows through them. Okay, like this. Circuit elements A and B. If I, if I were to cause current to flow through A from left to right, and that same exact current, that same exact charge flows through um, circuit element B, A and B are in series. For parallel, circuit elements are in parallel when they connect to the same two nodes. So here's an example, right? If I circle the top node and I circle the bottom node, both A and B connect between those two nodes. Okay, so that's how you identify series and parallel. And you can have circuit elements that are in neither series nor parallel. Okay, so let's let's work through these as a, uh, a set of clicker problems. Okay, all right. So let's suppose you have this circuit, eight circuit elements, Circuit elements one and two, are they series parallel or neither? Take a few seconds and work on that. And ask yourself for one and two, right? If, if I had current going through one, would that current necessarily go through two? Or do circuit elements one and two connect to these same two nodes or neither? So someone asks in the chat, are we relating one to two or relating them to other circuit elements? Just considering circuit element one and circuit element two, is one in series with two? Is one in parallel with two? And what that means is, does the same current that flows through one also flow through two for series or for parallel? Are one and two connected to the same two nodes or neither, neither of those cases?
Okay, so take uh, 10 more seconds and we'll, we'll go through a, a few of these. Okay, so I claim that if I could imagine current flowing through circuit element one, say right to left, that same current would flow through circuit element two. Not just the same amount, like not just four amps, like there might be four amps flowing somewhere else in the circuit through some other circuit element. I'm talking about the exact same current. Like if you could paint the charges, right, to identify the charges, those charges that went through one would also go through two. So these two circuit elements are in series. All right. So someone asks, does the current have to be the same direction or just the same magnitude to be considered in series? Um, okay, let me let me answer this precisely. So, if circuit in this case, if if current is going from right to left through one, like positive charge flow is going right to left through one, it's going to go left to right through two. Okay, so. If my reference directions happen to match up with that flow, yeah, they're the same magnitude and same si sign. Um, if reference directions were pointing the opposite direction through one and two, right, um, then the signs would be reversed. But uh, if, if you envisioned, right, fluid flow, if that same fluid flows through one and then also flows through two, you have these elements in series. It, in this case, it would be impossible for current to flow right to left through one, and at the same time flow right to left through two, right? That would violate KCL, Kirchhoff's current law at this node at the, at the left. Okay. All right, let's try this one. Elements five and seven, series parallel or neither? All right, so ask yourself the question. Looking at five and seven, do five and seven, all right, if they were in parallel, they would connect to the same two nodes. If they were in series, the same current would flow through both of them. All right, take 10 more seconds. Okay, so let's let's do the check of series. If I had current, let's say, flowing up through seven, would that necessarily all of that current flow through five? Well, that current's going to go through six. Some of that current's going to go down through five, but some of that current is also going to split, go through four, go through three, go through one. So the same current does not flow through seven and five. These are not in series, okay? Um, let's check nodes. Do they connect if they were in parallel? Do they connect to the same two nodes? If they connect to the same two nodes, they are in parallel. Seven connects to this upper right node and this bottom right node, five connects to this upper center and lower center nodes, these nodes. So right, seven connects to the blue nodes, five connects to the green nodes. They are not in parallel. So they're neither series nor parallel. So the answer is C, neither. All right, any questions on why these are not in parallel? Okay, let's see. So someone someone says in the chat, so technically five is in parallel with the combination of six, seven, and eight. Yeah, that's true. If you combine six, seven, and eight into an equivalent circuit element, then you could apply rules that apply to parallel elements for five and that combination. But what you couldn't do, you know, if you say, hey, I have some rules to let's say combine resistances in parallel, 
they're in parallel, like combined resistances in a certain way. You could not apply those rules to five and seven because those are not in parallel. Okay. So someone asks, does current split at nodes? It does. It does. Current current be, can come into a node, can go out of a node, can be zero. And you, you can't tell here what the current would be if it's coming in, going out, um, or if it's zero. But but current will will split at nodes. So at this whole big green node at the top, current can be coming in in from six. It can go out to five. It can come in from four. It can come in from three. Go out from one. You can't you can't tell. So someone asks, is uh, are six and eight in parallel? Um, no, they're not, because six connects to this upper right node and this center top node. Eight connects to the lower right node and the lower center node. And those are two different pairs of nodes. They do not connect between the, the same two nodes. Someone asks, does current split evenly at nodes? It does not. Current does not split evenly at nodes. Imagine this, imagine you had a six, six is a, a water pump pumping water into this top node. Like imagine this node, this whole, this whole green circled area as a junction of copper pipes, right? And imagine five, four, and three, they're like orifices, different, different passages of different diameters. And maybe one is a pump that sucks water out of that top node and six pumps water into that top node. You could have different splits, unequal splits of water flow, gallons per minute, um, going through each of those pipes into and out of that node. All right, let's try this one. And I'll get back to, I see there were a couple other questions that were asked. I'll get back to those right after we answer this while this clickers up. So circuit elements three and five, series parallel or neither? All right, so take five more seconds, answer that. Okay, so three and five, you ask, do three the circuit elements three and five connect to the same two nodes? I, cl I claim they do. You have this top center node and this bottom center node. So these two green nodes are two separate nodes. Three and five connect to both of those. So they are in parallel. Okay, let me go back to the previous question and answer something here. So someone says, so the blue node and the green, the blue and green nodes are four separate nodes total. That is true. The node is the entire connection between circuit elements. So here's a node, the upper right. Here's another node, lower right. Here's another node, um, lower center and upper center. So there are four nodes circled. And then there's another node right to the left here between one and two. So this is a five node circuit. Okay. We just happen to not be using that left node when working this certain problem. Um, so let's see, someone asked what happens if the current, what happens with the current if it runs from one to two clockwise? So one to two clockwise. So that would be clockwise would be coming up from two into one. So I assume it's coming into the top node. Would it split down three, four, and five, three, four, and five, once the current is on top of the circuit. And again, when the current has reached the bottom. Okay, so let me, let me draw an example here. I think this will be good to draw. I can't have colors on my annotation. So we're gonna pick whatever color I can do here. Hmm. I'm gonna figure that out. But let me draw some. Let me let me draw some um, arrows here. So let's suppose we have current coming into this node here. Okay, I could have a circuit where some of this current leaves that node in this direction, 
uh, I could have it enter this direction. I could have it leave this direction. Um, and I could have it leave or enter. Um, let's just say enter this direction, right? I can make a circuit with resistors and voltage sources and maybe current sources. We'll talk about those where this happens. Okay, so that's illustrating that you can have, depending upon what these circuit elements actually are, you could have positive charge flow, positive currents with these reference directions, entering from the left, entering from the right, leaving through three, entering through four, leaving through five. Okay, when you get to the bottom node, right, by by doing a mental <laughs> KCL at this node, current is going from left to right through one, so it must be entering here, right? Let's just say I'm drawing the reference directions for positive values of current. So current would be going that direction, okay? I have current leaving through three, the top node, so I have entering the bottom node right in that direction. So then I have current going in this direction. I'm just, I'm doing, uh, I'm following the flow of the current, right? If current comes into five from the top, it has no other option but to leave five at the bottom, okay? And if current goes into six, it's going up through seven, right? It's coming this way. So that's, if, if, I, if I were drawing the reference directions for positive currents, that's what you would see. All right, someone asked, what do you call the locations where the wires intersect? Yeah, like, let me circle one here, like that intersection right there. Um, I call it a wire junction. I would call that a junction. Um, um, I, 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 so for formally for circuits, a node is the entire connection between circuit elements, okay? Um, you could call this a junction. Um, a joint, um, but I don't know of any formal, precise term that I would use to be unambiguous about that, okay? Does each node have a uniform voltage potential across it? It does. So, so the voltage between, this, these are good questions. Let's suppose, let me clear this here. Annotate. Hmm. Wow, they've really changed the annotation uh, interface here. So I don't get a toolbar. That's weird. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to keep these up there for now. If I put the positive terminal of a voltmeter or the positive reference polarity right there okay at this left node and i put the negative let's say here on this node right there i will get some voltage that voltage will be plus minus i'll call it vx right that's vx there i'm measuring the voltage between the left node and the top node i'm also measuring the voltage across circuit element one if I move the negative terminal over here, uh, this was supposed to be a minus sign, then I get the same voltage. I'm still measuring Vx. If I put it you know, down here at the top terminal of five, up at the negative terminal, I'm still measuring the voltage across Vx. Voltage is defined between nodes, right? A wire, assume it has perfect conductivity for low currents, that's reasonable. Um, a, all these wires that form this node, right? They're all at the same voltage potential relative to some other point in the circuit, right? So yes, each node has a uniform voltage potential across it. In other words, if I go to the bottom here and I put a voltage uh, voltmeter lead here, and I put another voltmeter lead here, right? That's minus sign. I will see zero volts on the voltmeter. The voltage between a node and itself is zero. That's a good question because you'll run into that. Okay. So until I figure out how to get the toolbar up from for annotations, 
I'm going to have to stop this presentation and start it again. Okay. Okay, so now you should see the presentation again. Okay, circuit elements six and eight. We got two more cases to work through here. Give that a shot. So ask yourself, do they connect to the same two nodes? Do they have the same current flowing through them or neither? OK. All right, so I would claim that if I have current going left to right through 6, that same current goes through eight, it goes right to left, but it's going through eight. It also goes through seven, but the definition of series is the same current flows through the two circuit elements, two or more circuit elements. So six is in series with eight. So if these were two resistors, we'll learn about resistors, you know about resistors. You probably know how to combine them in series. You could combine six and eight if those were resistors in series, and that would be valid, okay? And you'd put it either on top of seven or on bottom on the bottom of seven, okay? Um, now, six and seven are in series, seven and eight are in series, six, seven, and eight are all mutually in series, so that's true. Okay, let's do one more, three, four, and five. Series, parallel, or neither? Professor, I think you muted yourself. <laughs> there you go. No, no, yeah, no, I was answering, I was answering, a, 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 a thank you for letting me know, you, I had my mute on. Um, thank you. So someone asks, why, why are six and eight in series? I think that was the question in the chat. So because the same current that goes through six also goes through eight. So if I have current going through six, it goes down through seven, that same current, that same current goes through eight. So those are by the definition of series in series. For six to eight, I went counterclockwise. I can go either. So for two circuit elements to be in series, this is good to address. If I have current going left to right, then that current's going to go down through seven. It's going to go this way. And that, that same current that is going through six is also going through eight. Like if I had two amps through six, I would have two amps through eight, okay? And and the, if I could, like I say, paint the charges, paint them all red, those same red charges would pass through eight. So they're in series. And yeah, they are connected to different nodes. So series, series is not asking whether these elements are connected to the same two nodes. That's parallel. Parallel elements are connected to the same two nodes. Here in this case, um, the uh, uh, we're just considering current flowing through six, and does that same current flow through eight? And if you want, if you want to work through some more of these, I can make some examples up on the board. Stop by office hours, and we'll we'll do that, so I can address you know specific topologies that you might have in mind that uh, that I don't yet. Okay, so let's go back to this problem: circuits, circuit elements three, four, and five. So they are all connected to 
the same two nodes. Right? So three, four, and five are all connected between the this top node and this bottom node, so they are in parallel. All right, so always go back to those two questions. If current were flowing through element A and that same current flows through element B, they're in series. If elements A and B are connected to the same two nodes, they are in parallel. Now, current doesn't actually have to be flowing. It's just if current were to flow, because I could have this circuit here. I could create the circuit so no current flows through six. It'd be zero amps, no charges flowing. Six and eight would still be in series. The topology would be such that six and eight would be in series. So that's why I say, if current were to flow through six, would that same current flow through eight? All right. OK. OK, so we covered KVL. We covered um, series in parallel. And I want to start talking about sources. So let's talk about electrical sources. OK, sources are circuit elements that maintain a voltage or current in a circuit. They are what cause voltage or current to happen. Okay, here are some realistic examples of sources, batteries. Batteries are a source, solar panels are sources, battery chargers are sources. Those are DC sources. Signal generators and function generators like you have in lab are sources, they're AC sources. So that's sort of obvious. What might not be so obvious is even though I'm calling a source a source, sources can either supply power or absorb power, right? Sources don't always supply power. Sources can absorb power. So supplying is, you can probably come up with lots of examples of supplying power. A solar panel powering a circuit is a source supplying power. An absorbing example is a rechargeable battery being charged. So if you have a rechargeable battery, that rechargeable battery can be a source, or it is a source, we represent it as a source, but it can supply power or absorb power. When it's absorbing power, it's charging, being charged. Let's talk about types of sources that we're going to deal with in this class. So I'm going to draw these in a a quadrant chart here. We're going to talk about voltage sources and current sources. And each one of those sources, voltage and current, can be independent or dependent. And we have different schematic symbols to represent those different types of sources. So here are the four symbols. If you see voltage polarity within a symbol, that's a voltage source. If you see an arrow, a reference direction within the symbol, that's a current source. If you see a circle, that's an independent source. That means that source is not dependent on anything else in the circuit. It's independent. If you see a diamond, that's a dependent source. When, when you see diamond, think dependent. A dependent source is controlled by something else in the circuit. It's controlled by some other voltage or current in the circuit. OK, so what we're going to continue with next time, we're going to cover each one of these sources. I'm going to give practical examples of independent voltage sources, independent current sources, and also dependent voltage and current sources. So on the left, you're looking at things like um, batteries and battery chargers and solar panels. On the right, these dependent sources, we use those to represent devices like transistors, bipolar junction transistors, and field effect transistors, okay, and audio amplifiers and things like that, and circuits that take currents from photodiodes and convert them to voltages. Right? So, so each one of these sources, source types is really practical, 
you can replace some practical circuits and practical circuit elements like transistors with these source symbols and do an analysis without worrying about the complexity of the transistor or the integrated circuit. Okay, so we'll talk about that next time. Okay, but I've hit the wall on time, so let's end this here. So in closing, uh, check out the assignments on Canvas. So check out the quizzes and the pre labs and the homework coming up. Uh, see the Slack workspace. Be sure to join that. If you can't join, if you're getting an error, try try joining from a PC. Thanks for joining the live class. I do think it helps with this participation. So if I say something incomplete, I can you can have me complete something. So it, it is helpful to join the the live class. Um, I'll start office hours right after class. So if you want to stick around for office hours, just stay up on this Zoom session. Um, if you're not joining, I'll see you next time. Have a great night.